Hey y'all, um, just wanted to make a video here about stippling. Um, I've been experimenting with it a little bit over the last maybe week and a half, two weeks. It's a little bit here and there after work and um, kind of wanted to share my impressions with it as uh, an amateur. Um, I've watched some videos online to kind of get ideas for techniques and used some of those ideas, tried to come up with some of my own, and I kind of just went into it experimenting and I um, wanted to share my thoughts with you so far. Um, it's really simple. I mean, it's literally just melting a pattern into plastic using either a um, either just a soldering iron like this one here, which is what I used on my first attempt, and it works. I had it laying around. Uh, I used to solder a lot of guitar cables and stuff back in the day, and um, it works. It does the job. Um, you just got this one basic point, you know, uh, works pretty well. Um, but I kind of wanted to try some other things, so I went out and bought what is probably the most common one you're going to see on any of these YouTube videos, and that's just this basic Walmart wood burning kit. Um, it's kind of nice, comes with a little switch on your uh, power cable, and uh, one of the advantages that I've seen with it so far that really helped me is um, the length of the barrel is quite a bit shorter than what you'd be looking at on a uh, on a soldering iron. So it, personally, I feel it gives me a lot more control um, because you know as I'm holding it and doing my stippling, um, sometimes you get a little bit nervous, and the more you shake, the longer the barrel is, the more the tip moves. As as you might you know shake a little bit or whatever. That being said, I don't recommend attempting to do this after a giant cup of coffee or a monster or anything like that. I want to try to be as relaxed as you can. Um, it will give you the neatest results, especially around your edges. When you're trying to tap out your edges, if you've got the shakes, you know, because you've had too much caffeine, it gets to be pretty messy. Um, so anyway, let's talk about this wood burning kit real quick. It was really cheap. Um, I think I paid maybe $12, yeah, $12 or $13 with tax after it was all said and done. And it's a really nice little little thing. I mean, it comes with this stand, which comes in handy, you know, if you're working on like a wood surface or whatever, uh, or anything that can be damaged by heat. You know, it kind of helps you prevent that from happening. It comes with a little package of tips like this. Um, I've really only found that like two of them so far, well, actually three of them have been actually useful. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you those. It's going to come with um, this little pointed tip here. Um, it's not super pointed, but it's a nice uh, sharp, sharp tool to do detail with. Um, comes with this real blunt, very rounded tip, uh, which is basically kind of shaped like a BB on the end. Now it's got some polymer stuck on there, but. Uh, it's kind of cool if you want to do different textures than just that one small point. And these all just unscrew. Um, you just twist them out, screw on the other tip you want to use. Um, the other tip, the only one that I really found useful, this chisel one's kind of neat, but I have only used it once, and I've had I don't really feel that too too strong about it either way. Uh, this one's super nice. Um, I'm assuming this maybe would be used for like a callig calligraphy kind of thing, maybe if you're doing wood burning. But it's a nice flat, uh, flat tip. And it works really well at ironing things out should you choose to do so. And I'll kind of talk about that in a moment on, on which, uh, what you could use that for basically. Um, so the tips a really a nice touch with this. It's kind of cool. It'll give you more options than just using your basic soldering iron, but if you have a soldering iron and you can use it well, use it. Um, there's no need to really buy this, but if, you know, if you've got an extra 12 or 13 bucks, it, it is kind of nice and comes in handy. Um, I wouldn't recommend personally jumping straight into anything like a pistol frame, honestly. Um, I find that that is a little ambitious if you're doing it for your first time because this is definitely something that you won't be able to go back to factory after after you've done it 
And if you do it wrong the first time, it's going to be kind of hard to uh, to ever go back, you know, and, and start over. You could theoretically, but it's just it's not going to turn out nice. So one of the best things that I think you can find to practice with, um, at least so far, what I found is your standard uh, M16 or you know AR15, just basic like I guess GI grip or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's really like pretty good to practice on. Um, this one, what I did was the checkering on the sides. I took a file and filed all the checkering down and then uh, went over it with a basic sanding, foam sanding block to smooth out all the filing marks. I feel like people really overcomplicate prep. Um, at least that's what I've experienced so far. There's no need to get like a glass smooth finish on the polymer because honestly once you stipple over it you're not going to be able to tell that you even did that um you just want to try to get you know if there's maybe something there that you don't want maybe get it out of the way first like certain textures and things like that on the grip that you don't want in there maybe get it out of the way first and then go at it um, but beyond that just the light sanding and smoothing out of um, like this i smoothed out all the uh, mold marks on it just for fun that molding line going all the way around so I just took that off and I was besides that in the checkering that was really all I did for prep I find that for making your marks of your boundaries what works best is just a plain old pencil um, sharpies don't really show up that well but uh, I'll try to show you real quick on this a pencil uh, when you're in the light even on a black surface um, you can see how it'll show up in the light it's almost uh shiny you know where you mark it and then to take it off you just rub it off but i find that that works really well for marking out your boundaries because uh, i tried to sharpie at first and i just really couldn't see it that well i suppose if you had a silver sharpie or something it would work well but it's a little harder to clean up too um basically though i mean you're just going to take like this one i use my soldering iron and i just one around. I'm going to do a video on actually doing this, the process of doing this, like as I'm doing it. But basically, I tapped out all my edges first, going around where I wanted it to be. And then after that, this one, I just did a very random pattern. Um, there's no logic or reason to this. Um, it was just trying to overlap dots, really. That's all it was. And I made a few mistakes here, um, which you can see, I believe it's this side. Yeah, you can see in here, I kind of want a little deeper in some spots and not so deep in others. My edges are okay, they could be straighter, but it's, again, it takes practice. It's pretty, pretty uh, challenging when you're going at it first and you'll be kind of nervous about it. Uh, but... That's, you know, like what my first time turned out like anyway. The ridges in the back, one point I wanted to make, um, I thought that I could just stipple over them and make them disappear. And they did definitely, they're not as prevalent as they were. I'm trying to get this to focus. They're not as prevalent as they were. But you can still see that they were there. And that's where that little flat tip comes in. The flat tip in the pack. Uh, you can actually go through and iron these out very carefully. And I'm, again, I'm going to throw that in my video because I've got another grip I want to do. Um, but uh, you just iron these out and then kind of sand it and smooth it out and you'll be okay. So that's that's what I practice on. An advantage of this is if you don't plan on using it actually as a grip, it's a pretty thick material all the way around. So you know, really, if you wanted to, you could stipple it get an idea of what it looks like, what your uh, skill level is, get like a Dremel and just sand it all down again. And you can probably do that, you know, a few times before you actually end up melting through the material. If, if, if you know, you wanted to, to practice more before you moved on to something else. Uh, the next thing I did was just this really cheap Amazon uh, vertical foregrip uh, that I picked up a couple of years ago. Um, this one, I did a little bit different technique on, I used that chisel tip to get in here and do these ridges. Um, basically, you can probably see what I did there is I took the chisel tip and, and did one row like this. 
and I came in and did another the next row like this and then alternated back and forth uh, giving it almost like a tire tread kind of pattern it's not perfect but again this is not something that I'm really it was just trying something out to see if it would work an idea I had in my head now this one I ditched the random technique and I did rows just around and around and around and um, kind of like the way it turned out a little bit it's still not perfect it's still you know amateur work I mean that's honestly like I said I've only been doing this maybe a week or so or two weeks at most and in here um, you know it turned out okay the edges on this one turned out pretty nice I think turned out pretty decent um, for uh, just kind of like an abstract uh, one or just like hey I've got this laying around I'm gonna use it kind of thing and honestly man the texture is really nice um, you know like I wasn't really convinced on the stippling thing because I thought it was kind of cheesy um, especially seeing people do it to their pistols I don't have the guts to do it to any of my, my Glocks right now I might someday have the skill level where I'd feel comfortable with it but for right now I, I don't I don't want to, but for stuff like this, man, it really helps. It gives really nice texture. And the cool thing is, once you're done, if you feel it's too aggressive, you can always go over it with your sanding block back and forth, just in different directions, and smooth it down to the point where it's still a good grip, but it's not, like, super sharp. Um, so that's how that turned out. This one I actually did today. Um, this is a Command Arms Accessories uh, AR-15 grip. Um... It was just like way too smooth for me, you know, and I was bored and I actually really enjoy doing this. This is fun. So I wanted this one today. Um, and I did yet again a uh, kind of idea I had for technique going at it. This one, um, same process I started out, I did all my edges first um, because I just feel like that's, I don't know, it's just the word to start for me. Um, so I did my edges all the way around, okay? Like the whole here all the way to the back, back to the front on the other side. And then I started working my way in in rows. Um, not, uh, I guess what I would say is I was kind of overlapping the rows slightly. And, um, went back and forth around the edges and it gave a pretty cool, um, pattern to it I think kind of like almost a clamshell pattern here on the sides or I'm sorry a scallop pattern on the sides I don't know why I said clamshell but uh, in the back um, I just worked my way towards the center um, going around the edges and then uh, so this all I did with that more fine point on the tool and then in this uh, the, the finger grooves here I used that uh, real round larger tip to do the in, the uh, insides of the finger grooves it turned out a little messy but I mean I'm going more for function on this than really trying to sculpt something beautiful uh, and then I just threw a coat of I want to say it's more of like a, a foliage green I was hoping it'd turn out more OD but turned out foliage more likely uh, but that's how it turned out and uh, I just wanted to show you this pattern kind of give you a closer look around the finger grooves. I really like that. I mean, it may not be for everybody, but I thought it was pretty darn cool. Um, of course, still got paint on my hands. That's what all that junk is. I'm gonna scrub that off later. Um, so yeah, I've got another grip that's almost identical to this. I think that one's a, um, oh, I can't even remember the name of it. It's not Command Arms Accessories. It's, uh, and it's something else, but uh, it's a brand, it's a different brand, but it's nearly identical. Uh, only difference is it's got a trap door instead of a plug on the bottom. So anyway guys, um, that's kind of my introduction to it. I'm going to do a couple more videos on this coming up as I have time, uh, on which, in which I'll show you the process uh, of going around and, and kind of uh, give you a little more detail on it. Uh, one thing that I don't have on the table here is a piece of steel wool. I recommend that uh, to keep on your table to clean your tips with because they will get a little bit gunked up with polymer as you go. And um, 
it kind of gets in the way so if you can just wipe it in the steel wool steel wool won't melt uh, because of the uh, the heat from the gun it'll just clean off the uh, tips pretty well so um, that's that uh, I hope you look forward to the other videos I like I said I'm having a blast with this this has been a lot of fun um, I would recommend doing it in a well ventilated area too definitely um, because the, the fumes are not the worst that I've ever experienced because you know I've done like kind of auto body stuff in the past and definitely need a respirator for that but it's just it doesn't smell very good and it's I'm sure it's not healthy for you so make sure you're doing it in a well ventilated area I'd recommend like a garage or somewhere even your back patio if the weather's nice plus you know the lighting will be good out there so have fun with it don't be afraid to try it I like I said I would just make sure that you start out on something that you can practice with a little bit something like this you can get these on eBay for like I don't want to say 10 bucks maybe maybe 15 after shipping and everything but uh you might even be able to find them cheaper than that if you get somebody that's wanting to unload one because this is what comes on a lot of rifles and a lot of guys switch over to something else and you may even be able to find one pretty darn cheap on there so just look for one of these or something similar even one of these uh four grips um, that you can practice with and have some fun with it um like i said I, i've just enjoyed using the different tips so far especially on this one it turned out rough but for a first try it was it was fun I uh, use that round tip again down here to break it up a little bit. So yeah, guys, have fun with it. Don't be too squeamish about it. Um, like I said, just don't jump into something that you you're, you might regret. Is all. Um, besides that, I mean, I I'm sold. This is pretty cool. I mean, it feels good in the hand. I, I tend to soften my edges a little bit, but it feels real good in the hand. It's a nice positive gripping uh, surface, and uh, it's cool. So. Hopefully uh, I'll get those other videos uploaded soon. I'm sorry this one ran so long. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you all have a good one.